So this is a campaign, obviously, with the billboards to be able to not only raise public awareness, I think the public's already aware of the, uh, the, the rise in homicides and, and shootings in the city of Portland, violent crime, crime in general, uh, traffic fatalities. Uh, we need more police officers. And I, I know the public knows that. I know we have support of the public. So what we're doing is putting up the billboards, asking the public to go into our landing page and uh, sign the petition to be able to have more police officers, be able to have more funding for the police bureau so that we can proactively police our neighborhoods and also so we can implement community policing in a way it should be implemented in our neighborhoods. Our elected officials have seemed to turn a blind eye to the data um, of the, uh, the rising homicides and shootings. And although they've talked about it, they haven't increased our budget, they haven't increased our staffing, they haven't increased our budget so that we can run specialty units such as GVRT, which they disbanded uh, in June of 2020, uh, before the rise in homicides, the rise in the, uh, the shootings in the city of Portland and violent crime. Um, they, they, uh, they seem to turn a blind eye to that. We want to not only uh, let them know that we recognize it, but that the public recognizes it. So the way to do it is by putting up the billboards, by having the public come to our landing page, signing the petition so that we can let our elected officials know this is what the public wants. Well, um, two years ago, our authorized strength, our authorized strength is what is funded and what was funded two years ago would be 1,001 officers. Uh, that's from the chief of police to the newest recruit. That's not just cops on the street. So that's everybody who has a badge in the Portland Police Bureau. In 2001, we had more officers uh, author, authorized uh, than we do now. And we had about 170,000 fewer uh, people in the city of Portland. So as you can see, even with 1,001, we're way behind the curve. We're catastrophically short-staffed right now. We have been for years, and we continue to do that. It's like running a Cadillac with a Volkswagen engine. We can't continue to do that. Um, our, our response times to calls are, are drastically higher than they were five years ago, seven years ago, when it was about two and a half minutes um, response time. Now it's about over eight minutes response time uh, to most calls. That is unacceptable but it's not because the police officers aren't doing their job. It's not because the dispatchers aren't doing their job. It's because we are overwhelmed by the number of calls. The calls for service increase every year, even though there are those in city council who say that people don't call the police as much, that's untrue. Even though we do need resources out there, we need other resources out there, but we still need a police presence. We still need proactive policing in our neighborhoods. People call 911 or call a non-emergency number. They expect the police officer to show up. No, if it's two in the morning or two in the afternoon, it doesn't make a difference. We run 24 seven, 365 days a year, and they expect that response. Well, well we need more than that. It's not just the, the, the over $15 million that they cut the bureau in actual cash. They also cut enough, uh, enough um, staff staffing to bring it over close to $25 million actually in, in, in real dollars um, with the staffing cuts as well as the, the funding cuts. So that's where we need to be and even more. Um, every year it costs more to buy a gallon of milk, a gallon of gasoline or a loaf of bread. So why wouldn't public safety be the same? It costs more to, to run public safety every year because we, we, we use uh, materials that cost more every year, but not only that funding uh, to be able to implement community policing funding to be able, to be able to proactively police our neighborhoods. All those things are important. We can see the drastic change in our neighborhoods. We can see the drastic change in our numbers just by the fact that we've been defunded and de-staffed by a city council. Our elected officials have turned a blind eye to that. And uh, if they're data-driven, if they wanna talk about data, that's data they need, they need to pay attention to. What about the victims out there? How are they, how are they going to, to continue to have faith? How are they going to continue to believe that they're safe in their city when the numbers are drastically going down, when we hear about the violence, when we hear about the, the, uh, the rise in, uh, the rise in uh, how long it takes for us to get to a call? Well, there's a, there are a host of issues and ours is not the only answer, but ours is one of the biggest answers, obviously, because whether it be uh, a person in mental health crisis at 2.30 in the morning, there are no resources but police to go out and to uh, respond to that and to get resources for those people. Um, whether it's a stabbing of a tourist, uh, police respond. Whether it's shootings at the food carts, police respond. 
Those are the things that are happening in their city that need to be stopped, that need to be prevented. Proactive policing will do it, but the numbers don't equate when we don't have enough police officers to do that. Like you said, about 150 police officers since last August, I was one of those because I retired in January, uh, left the bureau but resigned. We are seeing a record number of resignations from the Portland Police Bureau, people going to other police agencies and work. That is because of the political dynamics in City Hall. That is because of the political dynamics at the DA's office with with our DA. Um, That is because the the lack of support of our officers during the protest, during 150 plus days of rioting that no other city in the country has seen sustained violence like we saw this last year and a half during the rioting. Yet some of our local elected officials demonized, vilified, and criticized our officers instead of supporting them and instead endorsed the violence that was going on. That affected not just police officers, affected business owners, people's jobs. And now people are trying to put their livelihoods back together, their lives back together. The high rate of violence that we have in the city of Portland, that's gonna be hard to do. Portland's gonna have both. They can have public safety and outreach programs. They're not asking for one over the other, they're asking for both. But right now it's critical to do that. And the way to do that is to also not defund the police, also add to our staffing levels. We need a multifaceted answer and that's the answer. But the answer is not to defund the police in uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in all public services. We can't do that. We gotta have everything. We have to have both and Portlanders deserve it. Portlanders pay their taxes every day. They roll up their sleeves and go to work and pay their taxes so that they can have both. They need to have both. It's not one response or the other. It is both working together. We worked years and years with uh, mental health experts like Project Respond, and our outcome has always have been positive. They've been mostly positive outcomes over the years, over 30 years with Project Respond. Um, but to continue that, we have to have enough officers. We have to have enough people in those resources to be able to do that. Our, our behavioral health unit works with Project Respond, a police officer and a Project Respond counselor in the car together and they respond to calls for service of people in mental health crisis, people having issues with getting resources. We've been doing that for years, and it's a model that has been uh, sought out nationwide. Uh, How do we do that? And it's been uh, uh, got critical acclaim from the New York Times and other such publications about how we do it in the city of Portland with our behavioral health unit. The same thing with our gun violence reduction team, a national model for many police agencies all over the country who actually come to see how we uh, do our job out here. It's called best practices. It's called subject matter experts. Uh, that's what they were and that's what they are. And we've lost that because our elected officials have uh, decided to defund and decommission such units.